Welcome back, and today I'm going to make taco relish from scratch. It's an old family recipe on my husband's side of the family from Arizona, and it's probably about 100 years old, and um, of course I've modified it a little because I tend to modify almost every single recipe I do, but the basics are the same. So what you need is you need some very good quality tomatoes. So it's almost like a seasonal thing. So I got some good tomatoes here. And I got some green onions and some radishes. I was able to get radishes that were actually off the vine, which was nice because that'll save me a little bit of time in the cleanup. And some dill pickles. Now on these dill pickles, I used to make it just with regular dill pickles, but I found some that actually have garlic in them. So that's, that's pretty good. It actually gives it a little bit uh, different flavor, but it's very tasty. So like I said, this is seasonal because you have to be able to find the vegetables um, that are really ripe and tasting good. So sometimes tomatoes you can get pretty good in the winter, but I've had better luck in the summer. So I'm going to start by washing up the tomatoes, and they smell very good. That's how you can tell you have a really nice ripe tomato. I'm just going to rinse these off really well, and I'm just going to put them in my colander so they can start to drain. And I'm just going to continue to do this, and I'll meet you at, back at the puddle. Like I said, this is a taco relish. Now, you can use it. Um, first, I'm going to core the tomato. You can use it as salsa if you want. You could use it on homemade tacos, which is what I typically do. Uh, tonight, we have some leftover burrito meat, so I'm going to use it with my burrito meat. And it's quite tasty. So you first start by coring the tomato. And I'm just going to do a few and then I'll continue to do some off camera because it, it might take a while. So what you want to do, because it's going to go on more than likely tacos or something like that, or burritos, you want to slice it pretty thin. So you're going to need a very sharp knife in order to dice this tomato up successfully without it being too much trouble. Because if you use a dull knife, it is difficult to cut up. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to go like this. Hope everybody's having a great day. My summer's been pretty busy so I haven't been able to film as much as I'd like to. Okay, so I'm going to put this in a big bowl so that I can stir it very well. I'll store it probably in a um, like a uh, container that I can seal though to lock in the flavor but in order to make it it's best if I have it in a big bowl for mixing purposes now depending how many people you are serving you'll have to adjust how much how many tomatoes and how many radishes and onions and pickles you'll need So it looks like I have, let's see, I have six, seven, eight, nine tomatoes here. So I'm going to show, so that's how small you want them. Okay, so these are, this is nine tomatoes. So now we're going to go on to the green onions. So let's go over to the sink and we will go ahead and wash up the green onions. Mix them off really well. And then I'm going to put them in the colander so that they can dry off a little and drain. And I'll be back shortly with the cutting board. Okay, so I'm going to take the green onions and I'm going to take the, the very ends off. On this side. And I'm going to transfer the onions to my other cutting board. And I'm going to take this, that, these ends off, anything that doesn't look quite great. I'm going to take them over here. And then I'm probably to do three at a time is the best way to do it. And I'm going to just cut these in small pieces here. So 
but if you do three at a time, it'll save some time. Any more than three at a time might just be more difficult to do. And then I'm just gonna throw these on top of my tomatoes. And okay, I'm still cutting up onions. Before I go on though, I want to mention that I had two stalks of green onion. So um, I don't know if I mentioned that last time because I want everybody to get an idea of how the quantity, how much the quantity is. So I'm almost done with this. And it probably won't be a bad idea for me to stir in between adding things. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. spoon out. Looking good. Everything, all the ingredients are really fresh. So it is on to the radishes. Okay, like I mentioned before, I was able to get radishes that don't have the leaves on them. So that is a time saver. If you can find those that look good, that's a good idea. And this is probably the equivalent of two um, bundles of radishes. Okay, so I'm going to rinse these off really well. This is how I do it. I just kind of scrub it with my hands, make sure there's no dirt. And these are nice, big, good-looking radishes. That's why I decided. Sometimes I determine what am I going to make based on what looks good at the store. So, so I'm going to cut the ends of the radishes off. I'm just going to do a few. I'm not going to you watch me do all the ones. <laughs> Okay, so there's two ways to do this. So you could, if you don't have a food processor or a little mini chopper, you could go ahead and just cut these thin. And a lot of times I do this because I don't want to get out my food processor, but I am doing a pretty big batch. So I think I'm going to probably use the food processor today. But I want to show you how tiny you have to cut this up. So if you're not making a lot, it's almost easier just to clean the knife, I feel like. But if you're making a lot, it's almost just worth getting out um, a food processor to do. So I'm cutting it up quite tiny. I even have a mini, a mini, mini food processor that sometimes I use, but I would have to use it repetitively a lot. So I'm going to try this new food processor and hopefully it works. But just to show you, this is how tiny it is. And then I missed one. We're going to try that food processor. I'll try it with a few of these radishes, see how that comes out. Okay, so these radishes are very large. So what I'm going to do around so you can see, is instead of just cutting them in half, I'm going to quarter them, I think, even though I'm going to put them in the food processor. And I'm going to try a few in the food processor, see how it works out, and if it doesn't work out, then I will use a different method, because like I said, this is, see a little spot I don't like, um, this is a new food processor. I've not used this attachment yet. So, we will try it out and see where we get with it. Because everybody's seen the what the goal I'm going for is those little tiny pieces. So let's see. This is not like the huge attachment, it's like the short attachment. So I'm hoping that it works. So bear with me while I try this out. And we'll see. Try just a few. Well, 
these food processors, you may have to make sure everything snaps in place or they just won't even run. So let's see. Let me get a good angle here. Okay, there we go. Let's see. This might be loud. Excuse the loudness. Okay, I think it might have worked. Yes, it's perfect. It's just the way I wanted it. So I'll be able to do the rest of these in the food processor. Of course, it's hard to, with a new one, remembering which direction am I supposed to go. i got to go this way. Whoops, there we go. All right, so that looks good. So I'm going to do the rest of these in the food processor. Okay, so now I'm going to mix the radishes in. We're almost done. The only thing I have to add are the pickles. But I like to mix in between adding stuff. Makes it easier. Things get blended better. Okay, so since this was so successful with the food processor, I am probably going to try it with the pickles as well. But I want to show, if you were going to use a knife, how you have to do the pickles. Like I said, sometimes I just do the knife. It depends how much time I have. But definitely using the food processor is a time saver. Especially if you have room in your dishwasher to put the attachments. That's why I don't want to use a huge one. Also, a huge one wouldn't have mixed a small amount of stuff. So on the pickles, you're going to want to kind of cut them up kind of small. This is why it's kind of difficult to do it by hand. Now, you could get dill relish. I haven't been able to find dill relish that um, had all natural ingredients in it. If you do find dill relish that has all natural ingredients, Please put it in the comments section. I would like to know what brand I could I could possibly order online or something. I can't find any all-natural dill relish at the stores, but I do find a lot of all-natural pickles. That's not a problem. So, um, the, but the dill relish that's already cut up, that's that is fine. So you have to cut these pickles up pretty darn small. So. That's why I'm going to attempt, I'm going to put a couple in the food processor and see if it gets to be the consistency I liked. The radishes were a success. So I don't need to clean this food processor because it just has the radishes. Everything's going in the same um, dish, so I don't have to worry about that. So what I'm going to do, though, is I think I'm going to cut the pickles in thirds anyway and put them in the food processor. I'll just do a few at a time just in case it's does not work out. I have a mini, mini food processor that it works out well with the pickles, but I want it more uh, quantity today. So let's try, well, I probably had to put one more in. If you don't put in enough in the food processor, it won't work either. So let's try, hopefully this will work out the way I want it. Let's give it a try, excuse the noise. I am putting it on the wrong way. I'm going to snap it in place or it will not run. There we go. There's the sound we want. I'm going to try it. Let's take a peek and see how we did. Yes, it's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to run it just a hair more and I'll show you the consistency. Seems to have come out just fine. So I'm going to take a small spoon. I grab about the right size. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of move it to the corner so you can see. Okay, so I'm going to throw that in with the rest of the relish. So now I got the pickles in there. I'm going to mix everything up. Now, the best way to have this is to let it set for a few hours. But you certainly can go ahead and eat it now, and I'm going to taste test it here in just a few minutes. 
It's quite delicious right now, but it'll even be better after it sets an hour or two. So it'd certainly be done by dinner time. And I did make a large amount, so it will take you less time if you make a smaller amount, that's for sure. So it depends how many people you're feeding and how many days. It does last in the fridge for a few days, so that's good. All right. But I am going to transfer it into a uh, container that I can put a lid on it, that's an airtight lid. But that's what it looks like. And I'm going to taste test it in just a few. Now it is time for a taste test. By the way, besides being a good thing with chips and salsa and for tacos, and that's what we originally made it for is taco relish, um, it tastes very good if you don't, if you're out of your tacos and you're out of your burritos and anything else you might put this on, it tastes really good on a garden salad. Very good on a garden salad. So if you have some leftover and you don't have any more meat, try it on a garden salad. Okay, here we go. Gotta get a lot of that on this chip. Oops. Yeah. All right. Mmm. Very, very good. I haven't made it in a while because I haven't been able to find good tomatoes, but I did take advantage of the tomatoes looking so good and the onions and the radishes. So, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Those of you who subscribe to my channel, thank you very much. And if you don't subscribe and you enjoy the content, it is free. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.